All right. Well, I hope everybody's having a great Sunday afternoon. I hope everybody's kind of been able to calm down a little bit, been able to relax a little bit after that game last night. I know I needed it. Um, I was hoping to get this video done a little earlier today, but I needed that extra time just to think through what I wanted to say and and how I wanted to conduct this video because uh, last night was tough. Last night was really rough. Um, so wouldn't have the best day anyways, but that's life, you know, so you can't have a pity party for it. Um, so we're just going to kind of re recap some of the stuff that I, you know, maybe didn't hit on last night. That was just an instant, instant reaction. We're going to look a little bit more in depth, have a little bit of a longer video um, to try to see what happened and see what, what can go on from here. Um, it's crazy how OU Nation right now is split 50-50. Half the people, you know, are putting the blame on Rattler. Half the people are putting the blame on Lincoln. And um, some people in the comments have kind of not changed my mind, but they've given me a different perspective that I didn't have last night, and that just usually goes with the game. So, anyways, um, you know, I said this last night, first drive the de for the defense, they played really well. Or, or I'm sorry, they did not play well in the first drive. Uh, after that, they played really well. Um, you know, I'm guys, I, I know they didn't look great the whole game, but if I was to tell you three years ago that we would eventually have a defense that would only give up 16 points one game and then 13 points the next, you would have told me I was lying. Our defense has made huge improvements in, since Alex Grinch has been there. I know we're not number one, I'm, you know, but we are a solid defense, um, you know, and I th we should be very, very thankful and very proud for the defense we have this year and the guys that we have on there. And I'm really excited to see what they do. Um, going back and rewatching, <laughs> guys, we got a we got a defense that they might bend, but they don't break. They don't give up big plays like they used to, and and that's huge. Uh, that that's really huge. And so. I'm really excited. I don't really have much to say. Um, you know, they they played well. And, they, guys, if we only give up 13 points to a team, I don't care who it is, honestly, unless it is Western Carolina. But if you hold a Big 12 team, any Big 12 team, even Kansas, to 13 points, I'm feeling pretty good about that. You know, only one touchdown. They scored after the first drive, which our defense did not play well on, they only scored six points the rest of the game. Now I get it. West Virginia didn't help themselves, you know, with the offside, offside penalty penalty calls and the, you know, snap that was miscommunication. I I get that, but still, numbers don't lie, and we only gave up 13 points. And I'm, you know, I'm really excited about our defense. I'm really thankful we have our defense this year. Um, so, so anyways, it, it's weird how in 2018 we couldn't stop anybody, but we could score as many points as we needed to. And this year the roles are flipped that we can't score hardly any points, but our defense hadn't given up very many points. And so it's just – it's weird how things turn. Um, but anyways, so we're just going to move on to the offense. Actually, let's go special teams. Uh, Michael Turk is a dude. Um, man, that guy is a dude. He is kicking – punting that ball. And he's able – you know, he had some great punts. And he even pinned, pinned Nebraska <laughs> – Nebraska – pinned uh, West Virginia back below, you know, behind the 10-yard line yesterday. And that was nice to see. When you have a punter that can, that not only has a leg, but, you know, can get the ball where you want it, it's very important. Uh, Burkich <laughs> might be the MVP for the team thus far this season. I mean, he, he has saved us. We are lucky to have him. Um, so special teams was awesome. You know, nothing to say there. Um, so we'll just move on to our offense, and, and I'm just going to start with the running, rushing game. This is just what shocked me. Uh, we had, well, I'm not going to count Spencer Rattler's carries because it's he wasn't having designed runs. I mean, it wasn't like we were actually trying to get yards, and it's not fair to him because he's getting tackled behind the line of scrimmage because his offensive line wasn't good. So it's really not his fault. So I'm not going to include his stats in there but we'll just talk about Eric Gray and Kennedy Brooks they had a combined 17 carries and they combined for 55 yards for 3.3 yards a carry no touchdowns our longest rush of the game 
what of those two was eight yards. I think that pretty much speaks for itself. Um, the reason Lincoln Riley is so good at the passing game and he's known for this air raid is because he relies on the running game to suck in that defense. If you think about it, our best years that we've had passing, we've had really good running backs. And if you look at where those running backs go in the NFL outside of Joe Mixon, they really don't do much in the NFL. And so that shows me that that we are able to design plays to get the running game going and and we're able to we have an offensive line that can make those holes. And so that shows me that Lincoln needs that running game to be good so that we can have a better passing game. I mean, it's complimentary football. You know, that that goes without saying. Um receiving Michael Woods, to me, played the best out of all the wide receivers. Eight receptions, 86 yards, you know, uh, had that 35-yard bomb uh, that d- didn't score on, but it was a huge play. Um, you know, so wide receivers, you know, wish we could have had more touchdowns. What concerns me, and, and if you've watched several of my videos, you know this is a frustration I've had, is Austin Stogner had one reception last night. Um, guys, he might be our most gifted wide receiver. I know he's tied in, but wide receiver we have on the team, and we target him once. And the reason why we need to target him more is for the same reason why we target him in the end zone was because he's taller than everybody, and you don't have to you don't have to make a perfect pass. You just throw it up there, and he has a better chance of catching it than a DB or linebacker. Linebackers aren't fast enough. DBs aren't tall enough. So um, we, we've we got to get him more involved. And I don't know why he's not getting involved. I don't know if it's Rattler-ridden trying to get him the ball. And I'm not saying force it to him, but, I, you know, is, is he not getting open? Is is Lincoln just not putting him out there or, or you know, making plays for him to get the ball? I, I don't know what it is. You know, I have to go back and rewatch, you know, all the games of trying to figure out where is Stogner. Um so, anyways, that that really concerns me. Eric Gray was a huge help in the passing game yesterday. Um, you know, he was our second leading receiver. I mean, um, so offensive line, I guess is next. It's not what we're used to. It's that's not an offensive line that Oklahoma is used to having. Um, it's just weird. It's weird how they're just playing so bad. You know, we were told before the season started that this was, you know, Bill Biedenboe came out and said, yeah, I've never had a group of guys that have been this cohesive this quick or whatever. You know, we were told they were going to be really good. You know, we had gotten Wanye Morris from Tennessee, and, and Andrew Rain was supposed to be this, you know, great fill-in for, for Creed Humphrey. Um, it's just not working. It's not gelling, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's because we have too many people and we don't know who our five starters are. Or we're, you know, we're sw- it seems like we have a new offensive line every week, and so um, I don't know what that is. We got to give props to West Virginia's D line. They were good, you know, and we make right now we're making every defensive line look good. But anyways, I mean, they they seem like they're going to be one of the best in the Big Twelve. So we have to give credit where credit is due. And I didn't do that last night. And so I regret that West Virginia, you know, props on your defensive line. They played well, uh, but our offensive line has got to get better. They have got to get better. We've got to get that open, uh, that running game opened up. Um, and so anyway, so, you know, most of the comments on my last video, and this will kind of be probably where I'm going to hang out for the rest of the video. You know, like I said, I think that OU fan OU is kind of split in the two teams right now, the bench Rattler team and the, you know, it's Lincoln's fault team. And I know last night I seemed on the bench Rattler team. I think today I've probably moved over to the middle and you may say, you know, you can't do that. You know, that's not fair. Well, it is. Um, it is Lincoln's job as the offensive coordinator to, and I know, you know, Bill Beatonbow's job as well, but it's his job to coordinate the offense, Right. Here's what the offensive line does. Here's what the wide receivers do, the running backs, the quarterback. And when none of your – off, there wasn't a single part of the offense last night that played well, Rattler can't control that. And so I'm not giving him a break. I'm not giving him a second chance. I'm not – you know, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not trying to make him sound like he's better than he played. Uh, I still don't think he played well at all. 
but you know, if if wide receivers are not doing the right routes, if the offensive line is just getting out muscled and and whatever, and you know the running backs maybe they're not hitting the right holes, or maybe there's just no holes there anyways, or the wide receivers just aren't catching, you know, those are things he can't really control. Um, but there are things he can control, and I think that's what's so frustrating, and, and, and is he's not owning up to those mistakes. And if you listen to him on the press conference. He always says we, and and I know that I can't expect this. We can't expect this, but what I would like to hear from Spencer Rattler right now is kind of like what Tim Tebow said in 2008 after they lost, you know, and they went on to win that national championship. If, we, if only we had DeMarco. But anyways, another, another story for another time. Um, if I want to hear him say, you will never see someone work as hard as I am. I'm going to you know, fix these mistakes. I'm going to push this team harder than they've ever been. You know, I want to hear true leadership, and I'm not hearing that right now. And I'm not saying Caleb Williams would be that leader. I don't take it as I'm saying that. But I just wish he would take control of his position and stop focusing on the mistakes of others. I mean, you just listen to him talk, and it's just, you know, it's just you're thinking, well, you know, why, why, why are you saying that, man? Like, t- just it's okay to admit you made a mistake. You know, I make mistakes all the time. I made mistakes on last night's video. I'll own up to it. Okay, I was probably too harsh on you, but you've got to own up to your mistakes if you're going to get better. You can't solve a problem if you don't admit there's a problem. And so, um, anyways, I say that to say, I still think Caleb Williams would be a give us a better shot. Not to win a national championship. I'm not. I'm not even thinking about a national championship right now. For the sanity of my mind, or for the sake of the sanity of my mind, I guess I should say. And a lot of OU fans, my thought process, and I'm not a coach. I'm not an offense. I'm not a football guru. But from what I understand, if your offensive line is bad and you're having to get out of the pocket every play, your running game is not going good because your offensive line is bad and that defense is now being able to push back because they're like we can stop the run let's stop the pass Um, and then your offensive line aren't running the right routes what you know what can Spencer Rattler do in that situation that Caleb Williams can't do and I don't know if it's much yeah he has a bigger arm than Caleb Williams but if they're not getting open if he doesn't have time to throw if he doesn't have time for them to get open that far what's that going to help my thought process is if you have Caleb Williams and that and, and the play breaks down like it seems to happen all the time right now, he could at least make a play with his legs. He might if he got three or four yards, you know, a carry, you know, or or every time he ran out of the pocket, like that would be huge, I think. And and that would force right now the defense we go up against does not have to respect Rattler's running game. They don't have to spy him. They don't have to worry about just rushing three. Uh, or, or yeah, they don't have to worry about rushing three or, or any of that. They can just play their defense, and it it makes OU two dimensional instead of three dimensional. Whereas I think if Caleb Williams was coming in, it'd make us three dimensional. I think if defenses had to spy Caleb Williams, or if they had to respect his running game, it would make that defense suck up, and then we could go over the top. I think Caleb Williams is a great passer. You know, I know we haven't seen him pass a lot in an OU uniform, but Man, in high school, he can he has an arm. You know, it may not be Rattler's arm. I'm not saying that, but I think he can. I think he can make plays with his arm. And so, um, anyways, that's all I'm gonna say about that. I I've kind of moved over to the middle. I, it's not all on Rattler. He can only do what he can do. He just is not doing a good job at that right now. But we have other areas um, to improve on, and that brings me to Lincoln Riley. Um, I love Lincoln. He, he, he's a great coach, I think, in my opinion. I think he's, you know, the best in the Big 12 and one of the best in the country. Um, but I want to see a fire in him that I'm not seeing. Um, you know, I'm not going to call him soft. I think that's wrong to call him soft. Um, you know, I'm not going to do that. But I wish he would be a little bit more aggressive and be a little bit not demeaning to the football players, but just – motivating I guess you could say you know and and ultimately put them in a better position to 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 succeed Uh, again listen to his I mean he seemed happy after last night I mean if you listen to him after the game it's like dude did you watch the same game I watched because 
if I was a coach of that team, I would not have been happy with the way they played. But you're happy because they grinded out. It's like, yeah, great, we got the win. A win is a win. I'm tired of hearing that. Win is a win, yada, yada. But, but anyways, you know, I, I still think Lincoln can get it figured out. I still think he's a great coach. I'm not, you know, saying anything, you know, too negative about him. But I just want to see him push his team a little harder. And I don't think that's too much to ask for. Um, anyways, um, you know, one thing I got a lot, I got a lot of comments about being spoiled, about being whiny and people saying, be grateful you got the win. And I just want to address those people real quick. In my last segment, segment, I am spoiled as an OU fan and I am whining. You know why? Because we are offense you at Oklahoma. Okay. The last, since Lincoln's been here, we are offense university. I feel like we should be able to score more than 16 points on West Virginia. I feel like we should be able to score more than 23 points on Nebraska. I feel like we should be able to score more than 35 points on Tulane. We were told at the beginning of the season that this is going to be one of the most talented OU football teams ever and that this was going to be a special, special team. Maybe I'm wrong for getting my hopes up. You know, that's on me. But we should score more than 16 points. We should score more than 23 points. Call me spoiled. But this is OU, baby. We don't settle for that in the Lincoln Lincoln era. Maybe back with Barry Switzer, you know, I get it. This is a different era. We should have the best offense in the league. We should have the most points per game in the league, and and we're not doing it. And so, um, you know, that's just kind of my fact. Yeah, I'm spoiled. I'm whining right now because we can do better and we should do better. Um, I hate it when there's talent and um, abilities that go not wasted, but they're not maximized to their fullest potential. Um, I just hate seeing that. So we can do better. So anyways, uh, that's it. That's not really super in-depth, I guess, but that's just kind of more of my thoughts as I've went throughout the day. The comments have been really great, the nice ones. There's been some mean ones, but, you know, maybe I maybe I need some mean ones. I don't know. But uh, but I do want to thank you, everybody, for commenting on that last video and comment on this one. You think I'm more off-kilter? Do you think I'm, you know, what do you think? What do you think about the game? What do you think moving forward? Um, you know, tell me what – let me know what you think. So uh, I thank you for watching, and uh, – I hope you all have a great night. I'll put out a video sometime middle of this week. Start looking forward to our game against Kansas State. So um, we're, we got a tough game this week, and, and I'm hoping that we're going to get back on track and, and we're going to go 5-0. and and, uh, and I'm hoping that we can make a statement game, a statement game against Kansas State. So, look, we still, um, we, we still can win a lot. Of, you know, we can still make an impact in this, in this league. Um, we still have some really good guys. I'm excited. I'm not bailing on OU. If you think I'm a Fairweather fan, you're wrong. Um, I'm OU born and bred. So uh, we're, we're going to be all right, and we're going to have some fun watching the rest of the season. This is football, baby. This is what it's all about. And uh, so anyway, so y'all have a great week this week, and comment, uh, like, and subscribe to this video. Let me know what you think, and uh, I'll catch y'all sometime this week. So uh, boomer sooner. <laughs>